I'm going to continue to read off of the Drone Pilot Ground Screw Part 107 Test Cram Sheet. I take my test in two days, and I don't have anything else to talk about, so hey, you know, why not? This is the National Airspace System, Class B airspace, or big city airports, marked by the solid blue lines, require airspace authorization. Class C airspace, city airports, marked by a solid magenta line, require airspace authorization. Within the airspace, the value 110 over SFC means controlled airspace from the, from the surface up to 11,000 feet MSL. 110 over 20 would mean controlled airspace from 2,000 feet MSL up to 11,000 feet MSL. Class D airspace airports are marked by a dotted blue circles or sets of lines and require airspace authorization. The number is in brackets, means Class D controlled airspace from the surface up to the number in the brackets. If there's a negative in front of the number in the brackets, the controlled airspace from the surface up to, but not including, the height. When a Class D airport tower is not in operation, one of the following becomes applicable. Class E surface area rules or a combination of Class E rules to 700 feet AGL and Class G rules to the surface. Class E airspace is controlled airspace. There are a few types of Class E spare airspace, but you only need authorization to fly in Class E airspace if it is within the lateral boundaries of the surface area of Class E airspace designated for an airport. Class E airspace at the surface is marked by the magenta dotted circle or set of lines. If it's Class E airport that's surrounded by a closed off circle or circle with small extensions, you need authorization. If it's only an extension area, you do not need to request authorization, but should still exercise extreme caution. Class E airspace starting at 700 feet AGL is marked with a thicker magenta shaded and fuzzy set of lines. You do not need authorization to fly vertically up into this airspace. Class E airspace starting at 1,200 feet AGL isn't really marked on the chart, meaning if you're looking for a section of the chart without any of the colored airspace circles, it's Class G airspace from the surface up to 1,200 feet AGL and becomes Class E controlled airspace. You do not need authorization to fly vertically up into this airspace. Class G airspace is uncontrolled airspace meaning that as long as there aren't any other special use airspace consideration considerations or NOTAMS TFR considerations, you do not need additional authorization or permission to fly here. Special use airspace is defined by areas in which certain activities must be confined or where limitations may be imposed on aircraft operations that are not part of those activities. Prohibited areas are marked with a P and a number, no flying allowed. Restricted areas are marked with an R and a number and outlined with blue hash marks. In a restricted area, you might find unusual, often invisible hazards to aircraft like artillery firing, aerial gunnery, or guided missiles. Drone pilots can fly in restricted areas, but you need to contact the controlling agency in charge of the area for specific permissions. Warning areas are similar to restricted areas, but marked with a W. Military operation areas are marked with MOA on the chart. In an MOA, each pilot is responsible for collision avoidance. To find out if an MOA is hot or active, refer to the border of the sectional chart and then contact the controlling agency for more information. Alert areas are depicted on the sectional chart with an A followed by a number to inform non-participating pilots of areas that may contain high volume of pilot training or unusual type of aerial activity. As a drone pilot, you can fly in the alert area, but you should exercise extreme caution. And, lo and like operating in a military operation area, each pilot is responsible for collision avoidance in the alert area. A military training route is used by the military for conducting low altitude, high speed flight training at speeds in excess of 250 knots. On a sectional chart, MTRs identified as either IFR or VFR followed by a number. MTRs with four numbers denote routes flown at 1,500 feet AGL and below. 
At such a low altitude, this can present challenges to unmarked aircraft. MTRs with three numbers denote routes flown with at least one segment above 1,500 feet AGL. A temporary flight restriction is a restriction on an area. A temporary flight restriction is a restriction on an area of airspace due to the movement of government VIPs, special events, natural disasters, or other unusual events. A notice to airmen or NOTAM describes airspace information that is time critical or and either of temporary nature or not sufficiently known in advance to permit publication of aeronautical charts or in other operational publications. TFRs and NOTAMs affect all aircraft. Reading sectional charts. You'll have access to the FAA supplemental charts during the FAA knowledge exam. In that supplement, just after the table of contents, is a great legend that walks through the specific icons and numbers you may be asked to interpret. The equator is an imaginary line drawn around the Earth that is equally distant from the North and South Poles. This divides the Earth into Northern and Southern Hemispheres, and it's considered to be zero latitude. There are other imaginary lines that run parallel to the equator around the Earth, and these are lines of latitude. The prime meridian is an imaginary line that runs vertically down the Earth from the North to South Pole and divides the Earth into Eastern and Western Hemisphere. It passes through Greenwich, England and represents zero degrees longitude. There are other imaginary lines that run up and down the Earth in parallel to the prime meridian and these are known as lines of longitude. As you move north away from the equator, the latitude degrees numbers go up. As you move south, they go down. As you move west or left away from the prime meridian, the longitudinal degree numbers go up. As you move east, they go down. Each degree of latitude and longitude is made up of 60 units called minutes. Each longitudinal and latitudinal line is marked 30 minutes from the next line, which means they're half a degree apart, since 60 minutes is one degree. A small magenta colored flag indicates a visual reporting checkpoint or waypoint for manned VFR aircraft. As a drone pilot, you should expect a higher volume of manned aircraft traffic there. Above ground level, or AGL, describes the literal height above the ground over which you're flying. Mean sea level, or MSL, is your true altitude or elevation. It's the average height above standard sea level where atmospheric, atmospheric pressure is measured in Mean sea level, or MSL, is your true altitude or elevation. It's the average height above sea level where the atmospheric pressure is measured in order to calibrate altitude. On a sectional chart, all the numbers you see that denote altitude are denoted as MSL, unless they are in parentheses. If you see a number in parentheses, that denotes AGL. Isogenic lines indicate the magnetic variations or difference between true and magnetic north. If you think about the grid that is formed by intersecting ticked lines of latitude and longitude, then we're calling the inside of each grid space a quadrangle. A maximum elevation figure is the minimum altitude that you can fly in a given quadrangle and still be able to clear all obstacles in that quadrangle, including terrain and obstructions. The highest point is rounded up and then 100 feet is added and then that's the MEF within that quadrangle. If you're asked about the natural terrain elevation in a given sectional chart figure, you can consult the color chart where the different color tints show bands of elevation relative to sea level. These color, colors range from light green for the lower elevations to dark brown for the higher elevations. A Victor airway is a straight line segment that's used to depict low altitude civilian aircraft. On a sectional chart, these show up as thick faded blue lines Victor areas are identified by number, similar to an interstate highway. For example, a pilot can say that he or she is flying Victor 1-5. Victor airways are designated as Class E airspace, and vertically, they start at a base of 1,200 feet AGL and go up to 18,000 feet MSL. Along these Victor airway lines, you have low-altitude civilian pilots flying from 1,200 feet AGL to 18,000 feet MSL. If you get asked about the minimum altitude, lowest elevation of a Victor airway, it will be 1,200 feet AGL. That's it for today. I have two more sections on that cram sheet to read. It'll be another video. I have my test tomorrow. Wish me luck, and I'll see you later.